Hello, this is Pastor French bidding you welcome to another segment of Daily Bread. Today, it seems like all we hear preached is a feel-good gospel. Everyone getting along with everyone and changing the gospel into whatever the world is dictating at the time. I find the gospel far different from what is popular in today's world. For many years, I wondered why we think that being a believer in Jesus is going to be an easy road, full of peace, love, and prosperity. I have never understood how anyone could read the scriptures and come up with that scenario. Going all the way back to the prophets, reading about their lives and what they endured should give us some indication of how the world at large is going to react to people of faith. Elijah was running for his life most of the time. Micah, who was called upon to speak before Ahab and Jehoshaphat, was hated by Ahab, and after he told him the truth, was thrown into prison. Jesus, speaking to Jerusalem, mentions how they killed the prophets that were sent to them. Then when we get to the New Testament, it doesn't get any better. None of the apostles died a natural death but one, and that was John. Paul was constantly in peril and told us according to his own words what those perils were in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, beginning at verse 22. Are they Hebrews? I am also. Are they Israelites? I am also. Are they descendants of Abraham? I am also. Are they servants of Christ? I am speaking as though I were beside myself. I am more so, with far greater labors, with far more imprisonments, with beatings to a much greater degree, danger of death many times. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night I have spent in the deep water. I have been on journeys many times in dangers from rivers, in dangers from robbers, in dangers from my own people, in dangers from the Gentiles, in dangers in the city, in dangers in the wilderness, in danger at sea, in dangers because of false brothers, with toil and hardship, often in sleepless nights, with hunger and thirst, often going hungry, in cold and, uh, and poorly clothed. Apart from these external things, there is the pressure on me every day of the anxiety about all the churches. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you, lying on account of me. And repeated by Luke chapter 6, verse 22, Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Now, having said that, does that mean there is no blessing for the believer? Certainly not. Jehovah does bless and provides for his people. But that doesn't mean when you stand for the truth, the world is going to love you, because they won't. How often have stories appeared in the national news in the past few years of people being persecuted for standing up for truth? Offhand, I can think of several right now. Unlike many of our major religious denominations who in the past few years have caved to ungodly opinions, even going so far as to deny scripture or to try to change its meaning just to get along and be accepted by the world. How not like Jesus, the prophets and apostles, who never gave in to the pressure of the pagan world they lived in. They faced many of the same social issues we face today, but never gave in to compromise or pressure just to relieve themselves from persecution. They didn't care what the society of men thought about them. They only sought to please their father. Paul could have very easily stopped his persecution from Jewish believers and non-believers as well by just changing his stance on a few issues, but he didn't. Jesus could have built a megachurch if he had just acquiesced to the Pharisees' wishes, but he didn't. They would have put him on the throne as king if he had not been so stubborn about his teachings. I said all of this to say it takes courage to stand for the truth. And courage comes from true faith. Matthew chapter 5 verse 11. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you, lying on account of me. And Luke repeated saying in chapter 6 22 again, Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. The Lord speaking to Joshua 
encouraged him with these words. Chapter 1, verse 7 in the book of Joshua. Only be strong and very courageous to observe diligently the whole law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn aside from it to the right or left so that you may succeed wherever you go. I do appreciate you taking time to, to the time to watch. And until next time, remember, give love, give life, give Jesus.